The story begins with two boys slowly making their way toward the entrance of the cafeteria, while one of them is trying to stop the other by telling him that he will get hurt and asking him what he will do if he is mistaken. We see them spying on Kim Soo and his minions, one of whom offers Kim a cigarette and then starts smoking while the boy continues that a guy is coming out of prison soon, at which Kim Soo says that he should have screwed up that guy a long time ago. Meanwhile, one of the two boys who were spying on them declared that he had to check it out. It has been said that school is a space for educating young students to become decent members of society. However, it smelled of violence and crime. Bullies used to educate others directly about the bad habits that they had learned. So what the fuck does this learning space actually teach? This place has become a little political arena. The students who are labeled as school fists are not just at the top of the list. They are also a group that does not get bullied. They stand at the top just because they can hit a little better than the others. Kim Su is one of them who hits anyone who he does not like. They are not much different from daily life, where they are way too strong for the weak. Nam Gil, a freshman at Damyung School, determines that his test target today is to be competent in the hallway. He sees Kim Su bullying others and contemplates that these kinds of guys are the same no matter where you go. And at least from his understanding, the laws of bullies always hold true. He walks straight towards Kim Su and recalls the law of the bully, which is that the soldiers of a bully are his pride. He bumps his shoulder into Kim Su's shoulder and recalls the law of the bully too. If you touch their pride, then they will start punching. As he bumped into Kim Su, he started cursing him and threw a punch at him, which he dodged by leaning backward. His friend, watching this while hiding beside a wall, was surprised at this. After dodging, Nam Gil apologizes to Kim Su, saying that he was spacing out and then accidentally bumped into him. He then puts his hand on his shoulder and says that he has not seen him for a year, so how has he been? Kim Su curses him while saying that it has indeed been a long time. So what the hell is he doing here? The law of the bully three states that anyone easygoing should crawl under the bully's feet. Just then, one of their friends, Kim Su, tells him to don't fight with this bastard and that they should get going. Kim Su shook off his hand and threw a punch at Nam Gil while shouting that he was pissing him off. Nam Gil dodges it and asks him if he has an anger problem. Kim Su was embarrassed at this and went right at Nam Ji with a jab. But to his surprise, Nam Ji simply caught his hand and asked him if he did not know how to say nice things and could only throw punches at people and take pride in beating up weak people while pretending to be strong. He continues that he is an ignorant bastard and knocks him out with a right hook while recalling the law of the bully for that a bully cannot pull himself together until he gets beaten. Upon witnessing this, the guy with Kim Su also rushed towards Nam Ji, who avoided the first guy and punched the other guy straight in the face while ducking to avoid his fist. Then, as the first guy tried to grab him in a hold, he crouched, hit his abdomen with his elbow, and then threw him on the ground. By then, Kim Su has already gotten up and is running straight at him again, but Nam Ji blocks his fist, jabs him in the face, and then quickly gets behind him and gives him a German suplex on the hard cement floor of the hallway. All the students were surprised by this, and Nam Ji simply said that while looking down on Kim Su and his friends, he does not understand why the assailants sleep with their feet out and victims like him always have to hold their breath, they have to suffer, they have to run away, they shake in fairness, and isn't this so unfair? Kim Su keeps cursing him, and then he sees a wooden mop, so he tries to pick it up and goes at Nam Ji again, who then recalls the law of the Bully Five, which says that a bully is ugly to the end. Upon seeing Kim Su come at him with a wooden mop, Nam Ji Kami says that it is a weapon, and if something goes wrong, then he will die. He then simply dodges his attack and punches him straight in the face, which causes his nose to start bleeding, and Kim Su falls to the ground. After that, Nam Gil tells Kim Su that he is just like them, and so he is going to change him to the very nook and cranny of his rotten roots. After all this, he asks his friend Habin to go to the snack bar with him. Nam Ji witnesses himself to be in a room with several other men, and he asks if it is still working. One of the men responds that he cannot seem to get it. Then he panics because of the heavy banging at the door, and suddenly the door breaks open and lots of thugs with baseball bats come rushing in and he starts fighting them. Then he gets a call, and as he is talking on the phone, a man shoots him in the back. We see him wake up surprised, then realize that it was just a dream, and he recalls that he has seen this dream many times before. 
He recalls that it started a year ago when one day he woke up and then asked his mom why she did not wake him up, as he told her to wake him up at eight. His mom replied that she shook him for five minutes, but he still did not wake up. She asked him if he was forgetting something, to which he replied that he was not, and then his mom started beating him, saying that he should be more attentive and what if he left his medicines behind. Nam Jiol recalls that it was unusually warm that day, and he tried to sneak into the class, but the teacher caught him and asked him why he was late on the first day of school. But to Nam Ji's surprise, the teacher said that since it was the first day, he would let it go, but he should not be late anymore. Nam Ji sat next to Habin, who ignored him as he was trying to talk with him. The teacher then told them more about their new school, Dame Young High School, called it a shit school, introduced himself as their homeroom teacher of the year, and told them not to get into any trouble. As Nam Ji is thinking that he is smelling cigarettes somewhere around, just then a boy comes next to him and grabs Habin and tells him that he is surprised that he is in the same grade and classes him and tells him to take care of his bread and allowance for this year. Then he turned around to Nam Ji and told him he was seeing him for the first time so they should get along for this year, and he introduced himself as Cha Sung Tak. Cha Sung then walked out of the classroom and called his friend Ong Sang Ki and asked him which class he was in and that he was in the same class as Habin so they did not need to worry about the price of cigarettes, PC room, and alcohol. A Sang was also happy to hear it. During break time, Nam Ji sees that Habin is eating alone, so he sits next to him and tells him that since they are partners, they should have lunch together as he does not have anyone else to eat with. Habin gets up and tells him that he will go first. Nam Ji asks him if he is done already, to which he replies that he should not hang out with him because if he does, then he will also get in trouble. He started walking towards the exit, but as he was walking, a boy tripped him, and he fell over. Cha Sung shouted at him that he had dirted his uniform, then abused him and started beating him up while cursing him. Seeing this, Nam Ji gets up and runs over to him while telling him that it is too much and he should stop, but it seems like Cha Sung was waiting for this, and he immediately kicks Nam Ji in the stomach and tells him that he will have to pay for his laundry fee which is 300,001 until next Monday, so he should not be late, and if he feels pressured, he can go and collect it with Habin. He then gets up while calling his glasses and asks what his name is, but then tells him to forget about it and tells him that he is his bank from this day onwards. Cha Sung's friend tells him that it is a perfect idea for pocket money. Habin thought that he got Nam Ji in trouble as well, and Nam Ji walked up to him and told him they should go to the bathroom as their uniforms were dirty. Just then, he suddenly felt a lot of pain, so he grabbed his stomach. Habin got worried and asked if he was all right. He replied that he was okay and thought that it was hurting a lot more than he thought, and then he took out a medicine and ate it. As he was eating the medicine, a tall boy bumped into him from behind and told him to get out of the way. Nam Ji immediately stepped aside and wondered if this boy was a high school student, as he was already 190 centimeters tall. The tall guy started waking up in the hallway while shouting that traffic control had started. He went into a classroom and said that if there was a good guy, then they should go out of the classroom. One of the thugs was looking for him, but the giant guy punched him straight in the face and knocked him out. Then he went to class 9, and the punks there were surprised that an idiot had opened doors this hard, so he walked up to them and started beating the guy in front. The other thugs shouted that they should attack him once, and the giant simply grabbed the two boys, picked them up, and threw them on the floor. Another boy who was trying to hit him with a chair was kicked away. The giant then goes into class 8 and abuses the thugs there, who ask if he is crazy and if he does not know who they are, but before they can say anything else, they are all beaten up by the giant. The other students were recording this from the hallway. The giant repeated the same thing in class 7, then in classes 6 and 5, and then he went inside class 4 and said that it does not matter who you are, but if you are a good boy, then you should get out of there. He then announces that if anyone wants to fight, then they should come forward. Otherwise, this class is his shuttle, but a blonde guy calls him to the roof while saying that this is annoying. On the roof, the blonde boy asks the giant if his name is Pyo Sung Joon, and then asks him why he is so shirtless on the first day of school. And then it continues on that in this school there are mostly thugs, so he should not act like this. But the giant simply rushes towards him shouting that it seems like he is confident in taking him on. The blonde boy replies that he should see for himself if he is confident or not. The blonde boy avoids the giant's fists and punches him in the stomach, then avoids him again, hits him in the face, and then rushes down a ton of punches at him. 
All the students were surprised at this, as the giant was falling behind. Quan Ho Kuang and his friends were also seeing this, and one of his friends said that this guy was good at it and wondered who was going to win. The other guy says that it does not matter who wins, and that Ho Kuang is an idiot and then asks if they should wipe them all out here. Kuang argues that one side is too overwhelming. One of the boys said that there is always something wrong with fighting, but it's not a difference that he can change. And as they were talking, we saw that the giant was still getting punched by the blonde boy. News spread in all the classes that there was a fight going on on the roof, so Nam Ji also came to the roof to see it, and to his surprise, the giant that he bumped into in the cafeteria was getting overpowered by a blonde boy who was nearly Nam Ji size. Kwang Ho and his friend were still debating who was going to win. His blue-haired friend said that the blonde-haired boy was going to win because he was avoiding it all and hitting him continuously, while Kwang Ho told him that the blonde-haired guy had been at a disadvantage since the beginning of the fight as the giant only needed one hit and he would win. We see the giant fall on his knees, and the blue-haired guy tells Kwang Ho that he should have made a bet. Upon seeing the giant on his knees, the blonde guy starts mocking him, but the giant suddenly tackles him, saying how could he think that it was over and telling him that he let his guard down. After putting the blonde boy on the floor, the giant punched him in the face, knocked him unconscious, and then began to walk away. Just then, Kwang Ho starts asking his blue-haired friend for 50,000 won, who tells him that he did not make a bet. Kwang Ho tells him to make a bet now, to which he replies that he cannot make a bet after it is all over. A week has passed since that incident, and Nam Ji is changing his clothes in the washroom for the PE class. Just then, Cha Sung comes looking for him and asks if he has brought the money, to which he replies that he did not as he does not have the money. Cha Sung tells him that if he did not have money, he should have made and brought it, or he could have saved it together with Haban. Nam Ji starts crying and asks why he is doing this to him, as he has made him and Haban a mockery for this past week, and he would beat them whenever there were spectators around. Cha Sung became angry at this and started beating him up. Just then, we see Kwang Ho enter the washroom with the giant and the blonde boy and ask Cha Sung what he is doing. Cha Sung tells him that he is just in time and tells Nam Ji to say hi to his friends. Nam Ji is surprised to see them together, and he wonders what happened in the last week. In a flashback, we see that the blonde boy is in his class when the giant appears there, and as they are going to fight again, Kwang Ho opens the door of the class and says that he is happy to find them both here. He tells them it will be a piece of cake for him even if it is a two versus one. The blonde boy instantly rushes at him to punch him while cursing him. Kwang Ho simply catches his fist and tells him that he has seen him on the roof and his punches are not up to the bar, and then proceeds to knock him out in two punches. He then rushes towards the giant and beats him as well, and that's how he took control of the school, and no one dared to challenge him. Every bully in the school tried to get close to Kwang, and Cha Sung was no exception. Kwang arrives there and tells Cha Sung to treat his money with care, after which Cha Sung tells Ma Ji that he should be thankful to Kwang as, because of him, he is letting him go today. After a while, we see Cha Sung and his friends looking at pictures of a girl named Yu Yi. She lived in the same neighborhood as Cha, and he bullied her as well in the past when they were little. As Yu Se was walking in the hallway, she saw Cha Sung hitting Nam Ji with a ball, and as he was continuously doing it, he missed the aim and the ball hit you say. Cha Sung immediately came and apologized to her, saying that he did not mean to hit her. She told him to apologize to Nam Ji, but as he remembered her face, she tried to put his hand on her shoulder. He did not recognize her at first, but her friend pushed him away. You say then asked Nam Ji if he was okay. Nam Ji told her that he was okay and he should be the one asking her that, as she was the one who got hurt. Cha Sung left the place but was angry. After a while, as Yu Se was telling others that her math homework had been stolen from her bag, Cha Sung walked past her while taking a picture of her skirt. Later, Nam Ji catches Cha Sung and the other boys in the washroom, seeing that picture. He thinks that this is a crime and is thinking about what he should do, but Cha Sung spots him and Haban then drags him, asks why he is here, and tells him that he just acts like a saint in class but is now showing his true colors. At this, Nam Ji curses him, saying that he is not trash like them. At this point, they all start beating him, but he is saved as one of the students spots the school president in the hallway. Later that day, 
the teachers hand out pamphlets to all the students saying that they are holding a survey regarding school bullying. They tell the students that there is no need for them to be afraid, and they should write down the facts if they have seen someone getting bullied or if they know a gang or an individual who does it. The bullies kept staring at everyone, and victims were not the only ones who were afraid of their eyes. In the end, no one wrote anything. During the lunch break, Yuri calls out to Yusei, asking her if she wants to go and eat lunch with her. Yusei replies that she does not have enough money, which Yuri says is going to be her treat, and they both begin walking towards the cafeteria. As they were walking through the hallway, Yuri noticed that some boys were giggling and having fun while pointing at Yusei, so she told her to go ahead and that she would be there in a while as she had forgotten her phone in the classroom. Yuri arrives in the class of those boys and asks them to show the photo on their mobiles, which they were seeing, to which one of the boys replies that it is nothing and she should go back to her class. Yuri tells them that they should show her the mobile if it is nothing, to which one of the boys yells at her. Why is she telling them to do this and that, and does she know who they are? Yuri kicks him in the gut and shouts at them that she does not know who they are, and she does not care about it either, and tells them to just answer her question. She then tells them that it is their last chance to show her what photo is on their mobile, which Cha Sung Tak shot. The boy tells her that he has no idea what she is talking about and tries to hit her, but Yuri punches him in the face and beats him up, then picks up the phone and sees the picture. Her anger knew no bounds after seeing this, and she went straight to Cha Sung Tak, who was sleeping in his class. She threw a chair at him and then punched him in the face. He yells at her, calling her a crazy bitch. Cha Sung Tak shouts at her that he has never liked her before, and it looks like he is still in elementary school while rushing toward Yuri. Yuri simply dodges his fist and kicks him in the stomach, causing him to fall to his knees. She then tells him that it does not look like he is in elementary school anymore, as he is a much bigger scum and trash than he used to be. She asks him if it is fun for him to bully those weaker than him and then asks him if he thinks that what he did to you say is a joke. He then grabs his head and kicks him in the face while yelling that it is all a joke now and that what she is going to do is a joke and keeps asking him if it is fun while beating him up. She then yells at him, saying she cannot forgive what he did to you say. All the other students started laughing at Cha Sung Tak saying that he was getting beaten up by a girl. You say arrives in the class and calls out to Yuri and asks her what happened. Yuri thinks to herself that she cannot tell you say about it. And then she tells her that she has to go somewhere now and she will have ice cream later. Meanwhile, all the other students started mocking Cha Sung Tak by saying that he was just a weak guy, that they used to be afraid of him for no reason, and that they could easily beat him. Yuri goes to the staff room and tells the math teacher about everything. The teacher then calls Cha Sung Tak to the staff room and tells him that from today he will be subject to disciplinary actions following the committee's summons. He tells him that for the next 30 days, he will need to go to the volunteer site, and after that, he will fill up the front and back of ten sheets and come back to school every day for an exam. The teacher tells him to reflect on his actions and tells him to get out of the staff room now. Cha Sung makes up his mind that he will get his revenge on Habin, Nam Jil, and Yuri. Habin and Nam Ji were on cleaning duty, and once they finished cleaning up the classroom, just then Yusei and Yuri arrived in the class and asked them if they were finished. They tell them that they have finished it, and then they all together go to eat food. As they were all having fun, Habin became sad and told them that it had been a long time since he had a meal with someone like this. And while hesitating, he asked them why they were being nice to him. Yusei tells him that just because he is nice, and why is he trying to find a reason for it? They can just be friends. Yuri tells him that he is so much better than those guys who act like stalkers to Yusei and the bullies like Cha Sung Tak. Habin begins to tear up upon hearing this, seeing him cry. Yusei also starts crying. Yuri immediately tells Habin that he shouldn't cry as Yusei cries when she sees someone else crying and they should just enjoy the food. Nam Ji thinks to himself that this is so good. A school that is easy to attend. Friends who have lunch together are just an ordinary routine but it's not natural and he realizes it too late. Suddenly he let out a shout due to the pain that started in his chest. Everyone panicked, and Yuri asked him what was wrong. He calmly replied that they did not have to worry, and his heart used to be weak, and he forgot to take his medicine on time. Yusei tells them that he should visit the hospital, but Nam Ji tells her not to worry about it. They all went to school under police protection for one month, and everything seemed normal. 
He managed to stay safe because of it, but then he thought that the thing that Cha Sung Tak did with Yu was clearly a sexual offense. But for some reason, no one brought it up later, and because of this, they were more afraid. As they cannot be protected by police 24 hours a day. He thinks to himself that they are in constant danger of retaliation whenever policemen are not with them, and one day on their way back after school, late at night, his thoughts became reality as Cha Sung Tak came in front of them with a bunch of boys and blocked their path. Cha Sung Tak asks them how they have been. He tells them to follow him if they don't want to get hurt. Some of the guys noticed the phone in Yusei's hand, took it, and threw it away, saying that there was no need to call the police. Nam Ji and Habin get surrounded by the boys, and Cha Sung Tak slaps Yuri while calling her a bitch and shouting at her. Why isn't she doing anything now? Yusei got worried at this, but Yuri told her not to worry and to stay behind her. Yuri thinks to herself that this coward cannot do anything by himself, and that is why he came here with these many people. She thinks that even if she wanted to kill him now, she cannot do it as she does not know what is going to happen here, and she cannot ask for help either as she does not have any money. But then she sees some metal rods lying next to her and she decides that she can create a chance for them to run away. Cha Sung Tak slapped her again while she was busy in her thoughts and asked her why she wasn't saying anything now and said that it was all her fault that he got in trouble, and he recalled how he got beaten up by Kwang Ho because Yuri beat him up before as Kwang Ho told him that he does not like such a loser and how he begged him to forgive him while promising him that he will do anything he asks and how all the other boys saw it. He then pushed her away and said that if it were not for her, such a dark day would not have happened in his life. You say yells that it is their fault, and now, like cowards, they have surrounded them and are trying to assault them. Cha Sung Tak tells her to shut up and, while laughing, says that she should take care of herself first and that he is going to distribute those photos everywhere now. Yusei asked him what it meant, and the boy started laughing, saying that she did not even know about it. So Cha Sung Tak said that he would show it to her himself and took out its phone, and as he was going to show it to Yusei, Yuri picked up a metal rock and smacked Cha Sung Tak on his head and told all of them to get lost. At this, the boys started to rush towards her, but she beat them up using the metal rod, and while guarding, the others thought that it was Yusei who was in trouble here, and these bastards surely had a purpose for which they brought them here. She then tells Yusei, Manji, and Habin that they remember seeing the Changde market on their way here, and it will not take long for them to reach there. She is going to break through the road so they all should run for the market. Nam Ji was admiring Yuri while watching her back. She was a glimmer of hope for them to escape here, and how calm she could be in such a situation while he was unable to think about anything. But then he got hit by reality as Kwang Ho appeared out of nowhere, telling Cha Sung Tak that he could not even do such a little task. He punched Yuri in the face, telling her to get some sleep, and Yuri fell unconscious. The guys started to beat up Nam Ji and Habin, and then some of them looked at Yusei while saying that they could not believe that she was the same Yusei they saw on SNS. They said that she looked even prettier at night and they could not stand it, and they all walked towards her while snatching away her coat and Nam Ji while lying on the ground, kept yelling no and that they should stop, but then everything darkened. He then woke up in a hospital room three months after the incident. In a dark alley, we see Nam Ji all beating up some boys. One of the boys was shouting at others to hold this bastard and get him, but they all got beaten up by him and he was taken back by this development. The boy standing next to him says that he thinks that they have gotten the wrong one this time, while the previous then shouts that he thinks that it is him, the guy who turned to Hai and Dong into a mess. The boys then started telling Nam Ji that they did not want to fight anymore and offered him money to let them go. But Nam Ji told them to shut up and told them that not a single one of them was going to get away and started running towards them. He then beat them up while saying that those who have sinned should be punished. He then proceeds to completely beat them up. After that, he stands in the rain and decides that it is time to go back. He contemplates that he cannot find his old self again, and there has been a lot of trouble in a way that he never thought of. And how he decided to put everything right again, but this autumn rain was colder than he thought. As Nam Ji was taking a shower, he glanced at the surgery scars on his chest, and recalled the day he woke up on the hospital bed. As Yusei walked in, he looked at her and asked about what happened to Habin and Yuri, and Yusei teared up. Meanwhile, we see how the events unfolded on the day of the incident. At the shop of Yusei's father as he is giving out fish to one of the regulars at his restaurant. 
After the customer left, he saw that he had one missed call, which was from his daughter, so he tried calling her back. But the call said that the phone was switched off, so he used the GPS application to track its location and saw the phone at a garbage site, and he immediately panicked at this and started looking for Yusei while calling out her name. Meanwhile, we see the customer walking up the street as she witnessed Cha Sung Tak and others who were walking while smoking, and as she criticized how young boys nowadays are smoking openly in the streets, she sees Yusei with them, and she immediately recognizes her as the daughter of the man who runs the sushi restaurant, and she thinks to herself that she is not the kind of kid to go around with guys like these. Just then Yusei's father arrived there looking for her, and he asked the woman if she had seen his daughter. He told her that she was missing. The woman claims in shock that she completely misread the situation earlier. Yusei's father asks her if she has seen Yusei, and the lady replies that about five minutes ago she had seen her going in a spooky alleyway that led to an abandoned construction site with some shady-looking boys who were smoking. She says that they should call the police first. Yusei's father thanked her and ran towards the alley while reporting the situation to the police that his daughter had been missing. There was a witness who saw her being dragged by some boys into an abandoned construction site at Jang Chunsang. And there was one other girl with her. And her phone has been switched off. He urges them to come quickly. The boys were beating up Nam Ji and were going towards Yusei. Her father arrived there and saw her. But Seo Don Jin had arrived there before him and had shouted at everyone to stop what they were doing and get out of there immediately. And they all ran away. Yusei was trying to wake up Nam Ji while shouting for someone to come there and help them. And as she heard her father's voice, she immediately ran to him, asking him to help Nam Ji and the others. At the hospital, we see the doctor coming out of the operation theater and informing us that the three students who were brought here are not in a life-threatening situation. But Nam Ji is actually in a very dangerous situation. He says that he had been suffering from severe heart failure because of his original heart condition and could not live without taking medicines regularly. And now, after these injuries, it is very dangerous. His mom asks the doctor what is going to happen, who informs her that his heart has stopped functioning and there is no prospect of his condition getting better, and says that as of now there is no alternative but to perform a heart transplant on him before it is too late. Meanwhile, on television, we see the news anchor reporting the news regarding the case of mass assault in Daehyun Dong, Incheon, where dozens of high school students took four students hostage, and one of the victims had testified that the students tried to rape her as well, which was shocking. Nam, one of the victims, is in critical condition and is in urgent need of a heart transplant. The citizens are very angry with violence, which is increasing day by day, and wish that the guilty boys will be punished severely. As Nam Ji's mom was watching a video on the probability of finding a donor for a heart transplant and crying, she suddenly received a call from the hospital that they had found a donor for her son. The surgery was a success, and to the doctor's surprise, Nam Ji was discharged in just a month. He was fit, and he was so happy as if nothing had happened. At home, Nam Ji woke up and decided to go for a run, as he had been just lying on a bed for months and his body felt stiff. To his surprise, he was not getting tired at all, so he kept running. As soon as he comes home, he asks his mom for food, who is surprised after seeing her son completely drenched in sweat. She shouts at him that he had never run 100 meters before, and now it has just been one month since his heart surgery, so he should not exercise. He then eats the food to his mom's surprise. His appetite has increased a lot now as compared to before, and he also wonders why this has happened. He then sits down to watch the MMA fight on television, and his mom asks him if he likes martial arts. After the fight that he had been watching finished and the outcome was opposite to what he expected, he tells her mom that he is going to do it as well. He then enters the martial arts dojo, and as soon as he enters it, the smell of sweat reaches his nose.
He sees that whether they are men, women, or children, they are all sweating and exercising, and he remarks that the sound when hitting the punching bag is light, and he remarks that now he can do it as well. The trainer asks him if it is his first time learning martial arts. Namji responds yes, and then the trainer tells him that he will teach him how to guard first and tells him that boxing is one of the basics of martial arts. To guard, he takes up the posture while telling how his backhand covers his chin and his front hand stays a little higher than that. He then says that there are many types of guards. The orthodox is the one in which the left foot is farther than the right foot, and the stance in which the right hand is in front is called southpaw. Nam Ji tells him that he is right-handed, and the trainer then tells him that he will be more comfortable with orthodox. Nam Ji takes the posture and throws a jab without the trainer telling him to do it, and he then throws a straight while confirming with the trainer that this is straight, which surprises the trainer, and he asks him to tell him the truth if it is his first time learning martial arts. Nam Ji tells him yes and says that he has learned a few techniques by himself at home and that he only knows how to jab straight and one-two. The trainer gives him gloves and tells him to do a one-two with him. Nam Ji swiftly strikes the guard. The coach then gives him headgear and sends him into the ring while telling him to get ready to spar. Nam Ji asks him how he can spar on his first day. The coach shuts him up, saying that he should stop lying now and that he has been doing martial arts for years so he can easily tell who is a first-timer and who is an experienced guy. He says that Nam Ji knows has at least two years of experience. Nam Ji kept saying that it was his first time, but just then, his sparring partner entered the ring as well and told him that he should not worry as he would not hurt him much. Nam Ji remarked that he looked scary. The bell rings, and the sparring begins. Nam Ji swiftly dodges the jab thrown at him, which surprises his sparring partner, but the coach tells him that he can punch him freely as this is not his first time as a first-timer cannot avoid a veteran's punch. He then begins to throw punches at him with more speed, but Nam Ji keeps avoiding them and guarding himself. The coach then corrects himself that maybe he was wrong earlier and Nam Ji may have either three or four years of experience. Nam Ji remarked that the punches were getting harder and they kept hitting his headgear, and he was unable to guard all of them. Just as the veteran was about to hit him on the chin, the bell rang, and he stopped. Then he applauded Nam Ji, saying that he had impressed him, as people usually get knocked out before the time limit, but he surprised him. The bystanders were also surprised, and they exclaimed how a high school student lasted a whole round against veteran Lim. At night, Nam Ji could not sleep as he was feeling annoyed at the fact that he was unable to land a single punch at veteran Lim, even though he knew that he couldn't defeat Lim. He could have tried to land one hit, but all he did was keep dodging and avoiding, which made him avoid, and he remarks that he cannot lose. Nam Ji suddenly gets surprised and realizes what he was just thinking. He contemplates that fighting has never been his forte and he does not want to lose, since when he started thinking like this, he also recalls how it was weird that he kept avoiding and how he swung naturally and moreover, he even managed to counterattack against a veteran. He suddenly takes off his shirt and looks at his chest. Nam Ji is fighting alongside one friend of his, and they keep defeating the guys and make their way through the staircase after they defeat all of them. Nam Ji tells his friend that something is definitely wrong, and his friend asks him what they should do now. Nam Ji announces a change of plans and tells him that he should grab the cub himself and get out of there, to which the guy replies that he will not leave him here alone, and just then a guy in a mask appears in front of them who called them traitors and says that there is no place for them to run anymore, and just then we see Nam Ji wake up and exclaims what a strange dream it was. He then recalls that these strange dreams started happening the same day when the rapid changes started happening to his body. He then recalls how the contents of the dream change every time little by little and thinks that all of this must be related to this heart of his, and he wonders who is the real owner of this heart. Meanwhile at school, all sorts of rumors were spreading around regarding the incident, and as you say was walking through the hallway, the other students kept talking about how shameless she was to come to school even after all that happened. A girl tells her friend that she is very confident with her face and has fun with boys. Hearing this, 
You say cannot control her anger anymore and shouts at her if she has seen it with her eyes and asks all of them if they have seen what happened to her and her friends. She then tells them to stop believing rumors when they know the truth. She then enters the principal's office and asks him why she has been summoned. Principal Kim tells her it is a shame that a student of his school has gotten into such a situation, but she should understand the school's situation and they had no choice but to give recommendations. He tells her that the school does not want her and her friends to get hurt anymore, so they should transfer schools. You say shouts that it is too much and if they are going to transfer someone, then it shouts be perpetrators. Principal Kim tells her that their trials have not been finished yet and Nam Ji is fine now anyway. He then tells her that he would be very grateful if she could forgive the school and accept this with an open heart. You say got up and left the room. At Nam Ji's house, we see him reading the letter from the school, after which he tells his mom that he is really unhappy and asks her if she is serious about him transferring to another school. His mom tells him that he can go to school the next year as she is afraid of him getting hurt again. Nam Ji tells her that it is those bastards who did the wrong thing, so why do he and his friends have to suffer? He then asks her whether the school has sent this transfer notice to Yusei, Habin, and Yuri as well. His mom remained silent and he got his answer. He then told her that he was going out to exercise. As he was walking through the neighborhood, he saw three guys bullying a boy, and seeing it, he immediately got reminded of his past, and his anger knew no bounds. He immediately ran towards them and started beating them up. One of the boys shouted at him what he thought he was doing. Nam Ji shouts at them that they should just die while calling them bastards. As Nam Ji was beating up one of the boys, the other two got up and jumped him from behind. One of them punched him in the face. Nam Ji remarks that he let his guard down and just then the other kicked, causing him to fall backward. He immediately forms a guard and exclaims that this is different as compared to a 1v1 as he cannot avoid the attacks coming from two people at the same time. The boys yell at him that he should not have gotten involved in their business and hit him. Nam Ji remarks that guarding is useless and their punches seem different from when he was sparring. He then smiles and tells the boys that it is a shame that their punches are so weak, which surprises the boys, and he hits one of them in the face, saying that this is his KO punch and knocks him out. The other immediately kicked him in the stomach, causing him to fall, and tried to kick him again while he was still on the ground. This situation reminded him of the time when he got beat up by those boys, so that made him angry. He caught the boy's leg and then threw him on the ground and punched him in the face while shouting that he could not lose to weak guys like them who are trash. After the boys were knocked out, he thanked them, saying that they reminded him of the guys whom he wanted to destroy. The next day, at the martial arts dojo, Nam Ji asks the trainer if he wants to do fitness training, as he has already realized that he is still not strong enough to defeat guys like Kwang Ho and his friends. Upon being asked why he wants to do fitness training all of a sudden, he tells him that he just wants to exercise and get better. The trainer applauds him and says that they should get started right away. He makes him do three sets of 10 push-ups and then 200 crunches, pull-ups, and side steps, and then has him practice his punches 1,000 times. Nam Ji gets completely exhausted after doing all this and tells the coach that he feels like he almost died. His coach tells him that he is born with superb senses, but he does not have enough hardness. He says that he should keep trying hard and eventually he will get better sooner or later with consistency. Nam Ji nods and decides that he will get stronger quickly. Meanwhile, we see Yuri practicing kendo until her finger gets bloody, and then she says to herself that it is still not enough while thinking back to the day when Kwang Ho knocked her out in a single hit. She determines that she is still too weak, and if the same situation arises again, then she will not be able to get out of it just like last time. She feels sad and realizes that she is too weak to protect even herself. Then how is she going to protect you, say? Meanwhile, at the school, Kwang Ho and his gang, Kusfit, came, 
which surprised all the students as they thought they had all gone to prison. One of them shouted at all the surrounding students, asking what these bastards were looking at, and told them to get the hell out of their way if they did not want to get beaten up. All the students immediately left from there. The return of Cusfit caused great anxiety and fear for everyone. Everyone was suspecting a huge punishment, but the outcome of the trial was entirely different from what they had imagined. Only Cha Sung Tak and his friends who used to bully Nam Ji and a few others who did not have enough money were sentenced to one year in prison. At the trial, Nam Ji saw Cha Sung Tak firmly believing that he did nothing wrong, and he kept saying that he kept complaining of resentment for forcing him and his friends to commit a crime. And the creator of all this, Kwang Ho, did not get any punishment. Nam Ji had a lot of anger towards Cha Sung Tak, but when he saw Kwang Ho and his parents laughing at the results of the trial, his feelings changed, and he realized that maybe Cha Sung Tak was not entirely lying and he was not the root cause of the problem. Rather, it was Kwang Ho who orchestrated all this. Nam Ji started to prepare himself for the fight against Kusfit. He recalls that there are guys like Pyo Song who overturned the entire first grade and smashed over a dozen people, and Bum Ho who nearly defeated Pyo Song, and then there is Kwang Ho who toyed with these two. He realized that for him to become stronger than them, he needed practical experience. And the place he used as his hunting grounds was Daehoon Dong, a place where crimes happen frequently. This has become a holy place for delinquents, and the delinquents from other schools were also gathering here. He walked and stood in between several guys who started mocking him by calling him a pup and asking if he had lost his way. But for Nam Ji, these guys were nothing more than stepping stones to becoming stronger, and he does not need to be afraid of them. He then beats up all of them. Nam Ji began to spar in the gym during the day, and then he would go and fight the delinquents in the alleys at night. After a few days, he was finally able to hit instructor Lim, who praised him for it and said that he had come a long way and had gotten stronger. But then he kicked Nam Ji's headgear and then proceeded to grab him by his leg and throw him on the ring and say that he has still got a long way to go. kept sparring with instructor Lim in the gym, and outside he would fight the delinquents. A month has passed like this, and now Nam Ji tells his coach that he is not going to wear his headgear as he wants to receive the coach's punches as they are, and in one punch his nose starts bleeding. Even though he was shaking, he was determined to stand his ground as he had realized that someday sooner or later he was going to meet someone stronger, so he needed to get ready for that day, and for that, he needed to train his body to its limits. Instructor Lim deduces that Nam Ji is getting better day by day and remarks that his talent is terrifying, but this also makes him excited as he wants to see just how strong Nam Ji can be, so he decides to start getting serious. After the sparring session, Nam Ji looked at his face in the mirror and remarked that the helmet really was useful. Autumn had arrived and the weather had become cold now. As Nam Ji was walking, he heard two boys near him talking about him. One of them was saying that a weirdo is going around in Daehyeon these days who is purposely beating up delinquents. He tells his friend that some groups have already said that if they get to know who he is, then they will beat him to death. The guy wears round glasses and has been given the nickname Daehyeon Dong Glasses. He tells him that Kim He, John Su, and even Park Jun Ji had been beaten up by him already and says that at this rate, this guy might be able to reduce the bad guys near them. His friend laughed at this and said that if it were him, then he would have easily beaten up this guy just then. Nam Ji and these two looked at each other. One of the guys immediately asked if he was the same person he was talking about, but his friend responded negatively and said that just the classes are the same. The guy then asks his friend about how Pyo Sung is doing, as he is like a legend here. His friend told him that he went to Dimayongo and his friend that even Bum Ho also went there, and they started wondering if those two had already fought or not, and if they had, then who would have won? One of them said that he could not imagine Pyo Sung losing with that big size, 
while the other said that he could not even think of Bum Ho losing as he is an incredible fighter. These names reminded Nam Ji of Kusfit, and he became interested so he stood there and tried to listen to more of their talks. One of the guys said that school sure is crazy to have two such amazing students, and to this, his friend replied that not two but three, as Kong Dae Jun has also gone there. Hearing Kong Dae's name shocked his friend, who said if that crazy psycho had also gone there, then that place would soon become a mess. Meanwhile, at the school, Kong Dae beats up several students and remarks that he is disappointed with the school as he thinks that there must be some strong guys, but they are all so weak. Some students looked at it and were shocked to see the Cusfits members become punching bags, and some were worried about how they would retaliate against this. One of the Cusfit members, while lying on the ground, asked him who he was, to which Kong Dae replied that he was a new transfer student. While sitting on the floor, one of the boys asked Kang Dae if he thought that his pretty face would not get ruined and that he should just wait till the others got here. Kong Dae asked him, aren't they the ones who attacked the transfer student first? And he grabbed him and started spanking him while telling him to shut up and be a good boy. The boy screamed in pain that he had never seen such a psycho before and started to apologize. Just then Kong Dae heard a shout from someone who was telling others to get out of his way. And then he saw that Kwang Ho arrived there with his friends. He is impressed by Kong Dae by looking at how he defeated these many guys alone and asked him if he was the one who did this. Kong Dae replied mockingly, What does he think? Kwang Ho immediately offered him to join Cusfit after that. Confused, Kong Dae asked him what he thought of himself as the boss of this place. He said that he was expecting a round two from them, but he is disappointed with his response. Kwang Ho tells him that he will let him off the hook for what he did if he joins them. Kong Dae asks him if that is supposed to be a threat and then tells him that even if he makes him kneel and beg, he still would not join them as he is different from them. He ran up to Kwang Ho while calling him a piece of shit and tried to hit him with a high kick. But Kwang Ho stood there patiently as Seo Dong blocked his kick and said that he had been running with his luck. But his luck will not save him this time and it is too late for any regrets. He then throws a straight hook at him, which Kong Dae dodges, and immediately throws a jab in response, which Seo Dong dodges. Kong Dae immediately throws a kick, but it is easily dodged by him. He then says that, perfectly, he is a boxer, and they should do some warm-up together. Seo Dong started throwing punches at a fast speed at him, and the boys started cheering for him, saying that Kwang Ho was the only one who could dodge those punches. But to their surprise, Kong Dae also dodged them and threw a jab at his opponent, who blocked it. Observing the fight, Kwang Ho deduces that Kong Dae is doing good for now, but at the speed with which Seo Dong punches, he will not be able to dodge them with reflexes alone. Soon enough, Seo Dong lands a punch at his stomach and remarks that he is fast and needs to think of something else to counter the speed, so he lets him hit his stomach again and then immediately hits him with an upper kick, which he dodges easily but just at that moment he hits his chin with his knee. Seo Dang, while stepping backward, says that this is Muay Thai, and he again tries to avoid what he thinks to be a punch by stepping sideways, which turns out to be an attempt to grab him. Kong Dae grabbed his head and said fighting is not all about speed and started hitting his face with a series of punches while saying that no matter what he does, he cannot escape his grasp. He then punched him, knocking him off to the ground, and said that this was enough for a warm-up. He then turned to Kwang Ho and others and asked who was next, and as the boys were about to rush at him, Kwang Ho stopped them and said that the world is much bigger than he thinks and he should keep an eye on his opponent. Kong Dae looks behind him and sees Seo Dong standing. He remarks that he thought he had been done in by his strike and tells him that he should just give up as there are limitations to a typical boxer and boxing is weak compared to wrestling and kick defense. He tells Seo Dong that his boxing is useless against attacks from below and the match is already over from the moment he hits him, as boxing alone will not be enough to beat him. As he was saying this, Seo Dong came at him with lightning speed and punched him in the face so hard that he fell to his knees, then asked what the hell he was talking about. 